So protocols. Okay, we're at the application level now, and now we're talking about about protocols that run on the on, on the the transport layers that run on the hardware layer. And so okay, basically, there's this four we work with. There's the HTTP, which is you know all the web control stuff. SIP, session initiated protocol, which is traditional endpoints. So uh, be it PA systems or anything else, typically if it's a endpoint, a single endpoint, it's going to be running a SIP protocol. There are a few IAX phones out there, but they just never have made it yet. Even though I think the IAX protocol is better than SIP, SIP is rock solid. The IAX was designed just to work well with Asterisk. The Asterisk guys did it because they know how Asterisk works, so it works better with Asterisk, and it works really well with multiple trunks. So, and then RTP is a media protocol. And so, but there are lots of different types of media protocols. There is audio, there is like H.263, there's like H.264, which is the video stream on the phone. So, okay, SIP signaling media. As we were talking about earlier, the SIP signaling always goes through Aster from the endpoint. So here we have a telephone call. And the first thing that happened was we had this, this phone sent control to ask it to say, hey, I want to talk to an internal extension. He said, okay. And he sent a message to find out if it was there. Yes, it was. No, he didn't. Say, he said, yeah, it's there. He sent back and said, let's go and talk a particular protocol, um, be it G711. Okay? So they asked, they talked back and forth for a second and said, hey, we're going to talk G711, and um, I have these kind of features. He then goes, and brings his phone down here. So then someone, then he picks up, and all of a sudden now, this opens up the RTP stream back to the phone, still going through the asterisk server. At no point in time during the conversation does the stream ever break away from the asterisk server. It always goes through it in both directions. So, in addition, as you turn on recordings, you again create additional RTP streams to different, uh, si different um, systems inside the Asterix server. But they, too, look like additional audio legs. So, like, if you're recording cues and you're recording um, uh, the audio, and this is G729, this phone, and so you've got G729 only, and you've got recordings turned on for the queue and the user. How many G729 lights are you using? Not too many. Well, I should be using three. You've got one for the RTP, um, RTP to the Asterix server, because right here is where the transcoding is done. This gets converted to G711 to the phone, that endpoint. Okay, so you've got one G7 point. You've got one G729 transcoder being used from Asterix, but it's coming in as G729, and it's getting recorded as uh, a wave file. So that's getting transcoded. And then you've got the other audio file for the queue being also recorded and have to be transcoded. So in that particular case, where you're recording both the queue and the user, you're using three licenses of G729, and you've got three transcoders running at one time on your server. Could be a big deal. The fact is, we run hundreds of transcoders on the 3000, which is fine. The 2000, you've got to watch your transcoders and count them because it's got a smaller processor and a smaller cache. The 3000's got a 12 megabyte cache in the processor, so we're going to run lots of transcoders. <laughs>